Thank you. Uh, dear Mr. Uh, Blas uh, Gochin, uh, CEO at the BCGE, and dear Mr. Christopher Weber, uh, President of the Swiss uh, Chinese Chamber of Commerce, uh, Geneva Chapter. May I start by apology for two things. One, as uh, Mr. Weber said, that uh, Ambassador Yu is out of town at this moment, so I come here on his behalf. And secondly, I have to apologize that I cannot uh, speak in your language, so I have to shift to French, uh, English for the moment. But uh, I, I also need to uh, express my thanks on behalf of Ambassador Yu for this very kind invitation to the event, and uh, our, also our best wishes uh, for the uh, Swiss Chinese Chamber of Commerce uh, Geneva chapter, um, which provide, serves as a bridge of information and uh, business and uh, between the Swiss and Chinese community. And I also need to thank uh, uh, BCGE uh, for financing this uh, very important event uh, with your very strong presence in Asia and also very uh, deep uh, ties with uh, Chinese counterpart, which goes well beyond banking and financing. I also wish to congratulate the Swiss Chinese Chamber of Commerce Geneva chapter for identifying the theme of the conference, which is uh, the Innovation en Chine en Tournon, which I believe is both um, appropriate and timely. Innovation, by definition, means novelty, means uh, new ideas, new perspectives and new solutions. Of course, it starts with uh, science and technology uh, breakthroughs that uh, reshape the world as a catalyst for growth. In the words of Professor Klaus Schwab, our friend, and founder and executive chair of the World Economic Forum, we are now living in the era of the fourth industrial revolution featuring breakthroughs in the new generation of uh, information technology, life science, sophisticated manufacturing, energy, and other frontier technologies. China is standing on the threshold of this new round of uh, technological and industrial revolution, is proud to be the part of the force for innovation. In fact, uh, in a number of areas, China is among the leading group of countries in basic research and applied science, including high tech. We have made important headway, for instance, in superconducting experimental tokamak fusion device, in stem cells, in supercomputer, navigation satellite network, hybrid rise, just to name a few. Less than two years ago, a 500 meter aperture spheric radio telescope, or what we called FAST, F-A-S-T, was put into operation in the remote mountains of Guizhou province in southwest China. This is the largest of its kind in the world that will tell us a lot more about how the universe has come to what it looks like today or where life can be found deep in the space. These and other discoveries and inventions will certainly put China at a more competitive position in science and technology. But this did not come as a matter of course. On the contrary, it is the result of decades of dedication and commitment from top leadership down to every citizen in the country. However, despite what we have achieved, we in China are soberly aware of the daunting challenges in front of us, ranging from basic research, core technologies, to incentive policies and mechanisms that are essential for innovation. Innovation is more than original invention. It involves creative 
adoption, assimilation, and exploitation of novelty. One fine example that comes to my mind is probably the high-speed train. Today, most Chinese prefer to take a train when they travel in China. China now has more than 22,000 kilometers of high-speed rail uh, and I think across the country, and I think that is longer than the rest of the world combined. And that mileage is still expanding. But China did not invent fast train or high-speed train, nor was China the first to put it in commercial operation, despite of years of research uh, on our own. From 2004 onward, we went through a period of introducing, bringing in, and purchasing know-hows from leading manu manufacturers in the world. And we also assimilated technologies and integrated them with our own input and creation, of course. An entirely new and comprehensive system that adapts to challenging circumstances with varying topography and climate conditions. High-speed train has tremendously changed the way people travel and live in China and places China at the unchallengeable position in the world with its traction system, networking control system, as well as infrastructure construction and power supply. I was also a frequent traveler uh, for high-speed train when I had to shuttle between Beijing and Shanghai with a distance of, of 1,200 kilometers, which only takes about a little more than five hours. So the speed, safety, and also the sense of comfortability is for everyone to see and enjoy. By the same token, although China came rather late, it has emerged a leading player in mobile technology, P2P, e-commerce, and as my friends just referred to, the online payment. Innovation, of course, does not fall in industry alone. On the organizational level, innovation brings positive changes to the society. This involves strategies that bring more efficiency, productivity, and better quality and also disruptive innovation, what is called then, that breaks away from traditional ways of thinking and existing mechanisms that stand in the way of greater competitive advantage. For government, I believe, it means new philosophy, mentality, and methodology of administration by way of uh, streamlining the function of the government, delegation of power, improvement of monitoring and supervision, and provision of better service to the public. For China, innovation has always been seen as the most important driving force for growth. At the recent concluded uh, conference of the Academy, the China Academy of Sciences and the China Academy of Engineering, President Xi Jinping said, innovation defines the future and reform bears on the destiny of the nation. He also pointed out that innovation is the primary driving force. To translate this vision into policy, the Chinese government has formulated a strategy of innovation-driven development, as set out, and as many of you know, the 15th five-year program for national economic and social uh, development. This strategy highlights science and technological innovation as the core of and driving force behind all around innovation. It aims to facilitate new breakthroughs in strategic and frontier areas, optimize organizational structure for innovation, upgrade infrastructure and capacity, and set up a number of innovation centers with global influence in China. This strategy, I believe, 
offers broad areas of cooperation between China and Europe and the rest of the world. As a matter of fact, China and Europe have carried out cooperation in innovation in a number of areas, and the two sides clearly have tremendous potential for more and in-depth cooperation in the future. Indeed, innovation cooperation is an important part of the high-level dialogue mechanism between China and the EU. The third round of uh, high-level uh, dialogue on innovation cooperation, which was held earlier last year in Brussels, identified, based on the consensus the two sides reached, a number of flagship projects and initiatives in innovation, including agriculture, biotechnology, environmental uh, technology, sustainable urbanization, ground traffic, safe and green aviation, just to name a few. And also you know that the Belt and Road Initiative provides a huge umbrella for more concrete cooperation, including in the area of innovation. Switzerland has a unique role to play in cooperation with China in innovation, as many of you are already deeply involved. And I think this cooperation is, can be done both on bilateral level and also on multilateral level. As we look back at cooperation with our partners in the past, we have both success stories which offer more inspiration and lessons that provide food for thought. At the start of this century, as some of you may recall, China joined the Galileo navigation system in hope of substantive cooperation with Europe. We were the first, in fact, to put our committed 270 million US dollars for the research. Our European partners, it seemed, had a second, second thought on that for the so-called security reasons and also monopoly of know-how. So China was kicked out of the game. And uh, this prompted, on the contrary, China to start, or rather, to relaunch its own navigation network. Now, together with GPS and uh, GLONASS of Russia, Beidou is a leading navigation system that provides service on a global scale with 29 satellites, as I believe, working in orbit. And by next year, it will be a complete system of 30 satellites. In a similar way, China was abruptly turned down when it intended to join the International Space Station in 1994. We had to rely on our own. The awkwardness is that by 2024, when the current International Space Station drops out of service, the Chinese Space Station, or CSS, to be launched in uh, next year and onward, may be the only space station in operation. Of course, we take a very different approach. Early last month, at the launch ceremony of CSS International Corporation in Vienna, China made it absolutely clear that the door of cooperation is op open to any country or group that has an interest to do so, including those who rejected us. Innovation is not about monopoly. It is about working together and sharing. In a globalized world where challenges transcend national boundaries, cooperation, particular cooperation in innovation, is the best way to draw wisdom from each other by sharing our experience and come out with new and innovative solutions to these challenges. Are we going to stand up alone to this challenge or shall we join hands to bring about a better future to all? I think the answer is clear and obvious. So with this, I conclude my introductory remarks and I wish the conference a complete success. Thank you. Thank you.